So this is likely the most important part of this series because why build anything if you're never going to deploy it? So for context, we have an MVP of our .NET MI application bug porter, so let's figure out how to deploy it. So typically for .NET desktop applications, deployments are pretty tricky, and really that goes for any kind of desktop application. You have to deal with things like signing, certificates, distribution, and it can be a handful sometimes. So let's figure out how to deploy bug porter. So we have a sprint set up. We want to add some metadata to our application, such as the title of the app, the description, the language. And we also finally want to create a client installer. So before we can get into creating the installer, of course, we want to add some metadata to our application. So here in bug porter, configuring our app metadata, we're going to come into platforms. We're going to be deploying to windows and we want to mess with this package AppX manifest. So we just want to set the display name of our application. We want this to be bug porter. If we didn't set this and we just use the default, it would just set our project name. So it would be bug client, which isn't pretty. We just want plain old bug porter. And it's kind of inferred that this is the client application. So for language, we're just going to use en for English. That's pretty much what we've used throughout our application. We could take a step further and add some localization. Maybe we'll look into that and we'll add a description just for fun. We'll say a tool to report bugs that are bugging you. So that's really all I wanted to do for metadata. Let's commit these changes, adding the Maui app metadata, commit everything. So close out this issue. And now moving on to the fun part, let's create our Maui installer. So there's a couple ways that you can publish your application and create an installer. You can either use the CLI or you can just go through Visual Studio. So we are not going to use the CLI because it would involve me just pasting in commands. But if you are interested in using the CLI, I'll link the Maui publish docs in the description. So let's move forward with publishing from Visual Studio. So we're just going to right click our project and publish. Same thing we do for any application we want to deploy. And we are going to be sideloading. So I do not have an account or a registration with the Microsoft store in order to deploy our application there. I'd have to pay a fee and go through a whole process. I would like to do it eventually, but right now we are going to have to go with sideloading. So sideloading basically just means you're installing from an unofficial source. So unlike the Microsoft store, maybe you're just downloading the installer off some website somewhere. So as part of sideloading, we're going to be signing the application right here and the client will need to manually install or trust the certificate that we signed the application with. So this is likely fine for any kind of internal application, but if you're really deploying an application and you're deploying it to the public for anyone to use, you'd probably want to go through the Microsoft store. So again, might look into that in the future, but let's move forward with sideloading for now. And I am going to disable automatic updates just so that we can focus on creating this installer. So let's move forward. We do want to do package signing here. We don't want to have to deal with it after creating this installer. So a few ways to get a certificate. I don't have one stored anywhere, so we're going to create a new one. So let's click create. Let's enter a publisher name. I'll just go with Singleton Sean and we'll add a password here. There we go. Let's create our self signed certificate. So let's sign our package with this certificate. Move forward. We will automatically increment the version. That's helpful. And now let's create a publishing profile. So pretty straightforward. We want to publish in release mode and we'll target Windows X64. Let's also change this package location to release instead of debug. And we will publish this as self-contained. So this basically means we're going to be shipping .NET along with our application. So anything installing our application won't need .NET installed on its own machine. So let's continue and let's create. Sweet. Here we go. So publish completed. Let's go to this output location and take a look at this. And here we go. We got our installer. So now let's go ahead and try and run this installer. And as expected, we get this error over here. So our publisher certificate could not be verified. And this is because we used a self signed certificate and we're trying to sideload our application. So we simply need to just trust our certificate. So where is our certificate? Well, it's right here. So we have this security certificate. We can click that. We can install the certificate. We want to install it to our local machine. Let's place the certificate in the following store. I believe we want trusted people. Let's select that and finish. There we go. We imported the certificate. And now if we open the installer, there we go. No error. Let's install and we will launch. And you will likely get this error as well. 
can install the package because there's a different package with the same name. And this is because when you're just debugging your Mali application, it'll actually install the app on your machine. So all we have to do is uninstall that dev version. So if we come down here to the Windows logo, we should see our application right here. So here we go, we got bug porter client, and we just wanna select that and uninstall. Yours might not be at the top, you wanna have to scroll down through this list, but it should be there and we can uninstall it. So now if we come back into the installer, and actually we have to close it out and open it again, let's try installing again. There we go, it's working this time. And there we go, our application boots up. So let's test this out. So since we built our application in release mode, as we should, we'll be hitting our production bug porter API endpoint, and we should see our live Azure function get some traffic. So first let's actually sign up in Firebase. Here we go, sign up, make sure this works. Success, try to sign in, there we go. Get over to the report bug form, and let's report this bug, here we go. Success, reported bug number eight. Let's head over to our GitHub repository and we can see our issue number eight was created, sweet. And even more fun, let's come over to our bug porter API. Let's go into application insights for that. And we should be able to just look at the logs and let's just search for, here we go, traces right there. Let's run that. Here we go, we got the logs in here. Successfully created GitHub issue eight. All right, so we have verified our application is now installable. We got an installer. Let's commit these changes. So we're going to commit everything except for this temporary key that we used to sign our application with. I believe we don't want to commit that, although it probably doesn't matter here because it's just a throwaway key that we use to self-sign our application. But just to be safe, we probably don't want to commit any kind of key that we use to sign our application with. So let's just get rid of this, not commit it, and commit the other changes. And now the last thing I would like to do just for fun is create a GitHub release. So before we do that, let's tag this commit. So let's just open up this in a terminal. So let's see what we got here. So we committed the recent changes. Let's create a tag. And our published application was version 0.0.1. So let's reference that in our tag. So this is git tag client 0.0.1. And I'm prefixing this with client because we might also create tags for our API if we want to in the future. So let's create that tag and push that tag. And now we can see this tag that aligns with the commit of our release. So let's create a release that references that tag. So create a new release, referencing the tag that aligns with the commit of our release. We'll just name this version 0.0.1 .0 bug porter client, throw in what should be a change log. And now we're gonna come over to where our installer lives. We're gonna take this parent folder and just send this to a zipped folder. And let's grab the zip plop it in along with our release. And there we go, uploaded, let's publish. And now anyone could come along, download the zip. Unfortunately, they would also have to install the certificate that also lives inside of this zip, but then they'd be able to install and use our .NET MAUI application. So that wraps up this last task. We have created our installer, we have published it. Let's complete this sprint. Hooray, we have shipped our application. So just to summarize, we updated the metadata of our Maui application, and then we simply went through the steps of publishing our application just via sideloading, not going through the Microsoft Store, but we were able to get an installer and install our application and make sure everything worked in production. So hopefully you can apply these concepts in your own project to deploy your own .NET Maui application.